after all these days, <sighs> telling Eric Voss, stop wearing a blue shirt in front of a blue screen, I rue my own words. Are the lights in my glasses upsetting you? Trust me, they upset me even more. Hey, rock stars. I know I'm not Eric Voss, obviously. I'm way too handsome. I'm actually Erickson, no relation. I'm the lead editor here at New Rock Stars. Eric is actually out of the office for a vacation, leaving me here all alone to wake up and find that Adult Swim just dropped a brand new trailer for Rick and Morty season three, along with a release date of July 30th, which means I'm going to have to start paying for my cable to be reconnected on the 29th. And yeah, Eric's not here, and I have barely washed up, but I've watched the trailer a dozen times, and there's so much I noticed about possible storylines and references that I just figured, why should you guys wait till Eric gets back? I'll just give it a whirl and give you my own breakdown of the Rick and Morty season three trailer. What's the worst that could happen? I'll even do a sponsor ad for Quid. That free app that lets you collect and trade stickers you can paste over your text messages to add that extra amount of character to your interactions. After all, they do have a bunch of Rick and Morty stickers you can't find anywhere else. And you know, since I'm mentioning them and you loved it so much last time, I think I'll have another one of those contests where two of you can win a Rick and Morty Funko Pop. Anyway, let's talk about Rick and Morty season three. Oh, and I guess I should say spoiler alert because I'm going to be talking a lot about what may or may not happen in this upcoming season and you guys seem to really hate it when we're right. Anyway, let's just get into it, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna skip over the obvious clips from the first episode of this season since we already covered the entire episode in a breakdown that I edited so superbly, so you can go check that out when you have the chance. Instead, I wanna focus on the new footage in this trailer which parodies many familiar sci-fi and fantasy properties that we all know and love and try to predict some of the satirical stories they might have planned. Let's start off with Pickle Rick, which for fans should be a familiar image as we saw a short animatic from this episode at Comic-Con last year, which we see part of again here in a more finished form and it looks fantastic. We also get to see how Rick escapes this septic hellhole as he explodes out of a toilet wearing a makeshift gas mask made out of a rat's head. Later, it seems he finds himself being chased by some armed agent type goons, and he later gets a drop on them by messaging an explosive code that sets off an insanely huge bomb hidden under the desk they're staring at. And I'm guessing this might be a reference to Independence Day making fun of the ridiculous idea of being able to send a computer virus to aliens. Also, that's a pretty complex bomb to have just built when you're the size of a shriveled up cucumber. So I'm wondering, is this another one of Rick's circuitous plans? Also, how did he end up in the sewer? And if this isn't his plan, why was he so excited to be a pickle? I mean, between having to construct an entire Rube Goldberg iron rat suit device with your tongue and be chased by firearm wielding ruffians, I don't imagine Rick is enjoying himself all that much. I don't know, you let me know what you think. Okay, the next storyline I noticed seems to be a mixture of Avatar and Tomorrowland as Rick flies with Jerry in his ship towards this biodome city in the middle of this pandemic door like planet. Things, naturally, seem to take a turn for the worst as Rick and Jerry find themselves on a roller coaster ride that has two unfriendly looking aliens trying to kill Rick behind them. It's a missable moment, but if you look closely in this shot, you can see one of them holding a rifle at Rick's head. Of course, things get worse when the roller coaster crashes outside the park and Jerry finds himself alone in the path of this alien beast, reminiscent of a moment from Avatar when Jake Sully runs into a similar situation. Now, there's another very missable thing here. I've heard some people notice, and it's this whole in the middle of Rick's shirt. Some people think this has to be a connection to an Iron Man-like scenario, but I'm pretty sure that's blood surrounding that hole. So it almost seems like at some point, Rick got shot and either with a wound healed or maybe he was wearing some sort of protective layer underneath. Either way, it connects to another clue as to what might be happening in this episode as we later see the same Rick with the same hole in his shirt reveal himself to be a robot with a Transformer-like laser arm. So I'm thinking this wasn't even our original C-137 Rick. After all, the first episode of the season, we see Rick get Jerry kicked out of the house and seem very happy about it. So which Rick is this? And actually, is this our original Jerry? After all, we saw a Morty Night Run. There are various Jerrys that all the Ricks are aware of. But let's move on to the next episode. This is clearly a Mad Max homage from start to finish. We have the motorcade. There's an Immortal Joe-like character being killed by Summer in a Furiosa role using a shotgun that looks madly similar to Max's. At first, I thought this might be in the Cronenberg world as I tried desperately to figure out what they were cooking on that skewer. But then I remembered that the serum Rick made in Rick Potion number nine only affects people that are not related to Morty and himself. So unless everyone in this shot is related, I think it's safe to assume that this is a place we haven't visited yet. Also, if you look closely at Rick at the front of the motorcade, you'll notice this gun he is holding is the same gun he is holding when he, Morty, and Summer fall out of a port in the garage as if they just narrowly missed some sort of dark demise. So I'm thinking things are gonna work out for them this time around, but what I'm really curious about is what is this green glowing object 
object next to Rick in the passenger seat. I don't see Morty anywhere, but I also don't think that this is him. More likely, it's something that Rick's gonna use either to save Morty or trade for Morty's life, or it might just be a totally different character entirely. Moving on to another episode we get a very brief glimpse of is The Vindicators, a Guardians of the Galaxy slash Avengers-like group of superheroes that seem to enroll Morty as part of the group. If you look closely at the insignia on Morty's jacket, it matches the same insignia on Chris Pratt's looking character, and the insignia on the base of the pulsating purple gem that indicates to Rick when they need him. Gems, cosmic superheroes, a hellish landscape with a giant overlord. I think this is going to be a very heavy parody of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, and I've got another episode I noticed, but first I gotta tell you about Quid. Okay, so first off, thank you to Quid for sponsoring today's video. Your faith in me is only matched by the depth of your sticker collection, which is massive. And only rivaled by your ability to allow Quid users to collect cards and 3D figures all conveniently on their phone so it never leaves them. Basically takes me back to the elementary school days I used to have my own personal sticker collection that I would share and trade with my fellow classmates. Back then, I only had ponies and dolphins, not Rick and Morty or Adventure Time or oh my God, yes, they even have Scream Queens. And you know, from what I've heard, they're always adding more stickers to their collection for you to drag and drop into your text messages like Kendrick Lamar drops mad bars on dope beats. I'm sure that's the first time that's ever been said on this channel. And before you even think to yourself, oh yeah, maybe I'll download it in like a week from now, these stickers do run out and can be super rare. So good luck or else you're gonna have to find someone to trade with. Oh, and did I mention there are new Rockstar stickers? Arrows, circles, and our famous lightning bolt? I'm only asking because I'm looking for someone to trade with. Oh, all right, if you like Funko Pops, they have those too. Oh, and speaking of Funko Pops, if you follow new Rockstars on Twitter and share this video with the hashtag PickleRickStars, you could be one of two people to win a Rick and Morty Funko Pop. And then if you want to, you can search out the other person who won and get married. No pressure, you just do what you want with your life. Anyway, that's enough of that. Back to the video, right? Now, there was one last storyline I was able to hone in on, but before I talk about that, let me just acknowledge the scenes I couldn't connect anything. There's a shot of Morty and Beth blowing up a summer to the size of the Iron Giant, which ends up being a double reference to Honey, I Blew Up the Kid and the 50-foot woman. And it's also followed by the introduction of a new character, Gene, who is obviously inspired by Wilson, the friendly neighbor from one of my favorite shows as a 90s kid, Home Improvement. We also see an emotionless Morty with an arm the size of the Hulks choking out this poor guy in a bathtub before being interrupted by Rick mixing potions or possibly alcohol in the corner. Now this could be a Game of Thrones style episode, but people have also brought up The Witcher and I'm apt to agree because both Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland have spoken very fondly of that video game series. There is this quick scene of Rick and Morty tied to a giant piano device in the most Adam West Batman scenario I've ever seen. I mean, look how deliciously camp this all is. There's a giant piano with an even smaller piano on top of it and I'm willing to bet a lunch that that piano is directly connected to the hammers above our hero's head. There's a part of me that thinks this could also be connected to the Vindicators episode because the color scheme of this place matches the scene I mentioned earlier, but these dead characters all look exactly the same and Morty isn't wearing his Vindicator jacket. But then again, this could be moments before the Vindicators come in and save the two of them. And there's this final shot of Summer with a more beefed up cyborg version of herself getting ready to possibly murder Rick? I don't know. This whole shot leaves a lot to the imagination. Some people have even guessed this might be the original Summer from Cronenberg World, but I think that's kind of lucky considering how much she and her parents were against Rick's technology in the last episode. But then again, maybe she's decided to embrace this evil to destroy the evil that created it. I don't know. I'm not an expert in this stuff after all. I'm literally just guessing off of like 30 frames of footage. Okay, so there's another episode I've been skirting around and it's possibly the most interesting storyline that's been revealed. And that's involving the melted Morty and Rick. Now, throughout the entire trailer, there's these two green boogeymen that are seen battling Rick and Morty in the normal world, leading us to believe that these are the villains of this episode. But this final scene turns everything upside down as we realize that Rick and Morty, seemingly covered in the goo they're standing in, their faces melting, are trying to escape this putrid melty face hell. By the way, there are a lot of hellscapes in this trailer. A desert, a sewer, a literal hell, and now this green snot rot location. Rick was not kidding when he said this is going to be their darkest year ever. Anyway, I get off track. People seem to think that this location is also the Cronenberg world, but I beg to differ because the aliens we see all look like they originated from different species species, and all the surroundings seem more like the creatures have melted rather than transformed. Still, wherever this is, Rick and Morty seem to have been put here by someone. And another theory is that these two non-green Rick and Mortys could be the evil Rick and Morty from season one's Close Recounters of the Rick Kind. Now, granted, that Rick was a robot, but we never did see where the Morty that was controlling him went. This could be him, and this Rick could be a robot Rick, or this could also just be a regular Rick and Morty so desperate to find a safe place to call their own. One of the most interesting things about this show has always been the amorality of a a lot of Rick's decisions. Yeah, sure, some of the Ricks we meet are jerks, but most of them are just like Rick. 
jerks, but, but you know, lovable jerks. Since the first season, I've always wondered what happened we started following another pair of Rick and Morty. Sometimes I wasn't even sure if we were still following the same one. And this could be that story. So where do you think they are? Is this the Cronenberg world? And are these our original Rick and Morty? Or are these just another pair of Rick and Morty's trying to survive? Let me know what you think in these comments. Or just tweet me at Just Erickson. Also, if you haven't yet, follow us at New Rockstars. It gets you close to winning a Funko Pop doll, but it also helps you keep up to date with all our videos that we're coming out with. And we have a lot coming out, including some big changes you're gonna wanna hear about. Oh, and if you wanna be a part of those changes, you can become a member of our Patreon family. Just one dollar gets you behind the scenes news and articles that we don't offer anywhere else. Um, I guess I'll leave you with uh, love, peace, and chicken grease. That's all I got, okay? I'm new at this.